Welcome to the Global Prayer Network, with Rev. Dr. Seth O. Lardy. We pray this teaching will impact your life, and bring you closer in your walk with Jesus. Let's get ready to receive today's teaching from, Rev. Dr. Seth O. Lardy. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you might be on the globe. Let me welcome you to this, the Tuesday edition of the Global Prayer Focus. This is the dream, this is the vision whereby we would like to see the world come to a place of peace, a place of unity, a place of love, uh, the end to all of the wars and sufferings in the world. And we believe, we strongly believe God can do it if we are unified in our voice. And that's the reason why we have the global prayer focus and what will happen with the global prayer focus. We're gonna have 197 persons, each representing a country in the world. And at noon, wherever we are, we are gonna be lifting up our voices onto God. If you think things are difficult now, you wait and see what the enemy is planning because what's happening we are moving toward the end of the age. And because of that, he wants to make sure he takes any and everything he can with him. But God said, if my people, which are called by my name, will seek my face, humble themselves, turn from their wicked ways, God said he can change things around. And that's what we are about. And I want you to be a part of this agent of change. I want you to be a part of those who are not just sitting around, talking about what's going on, sitting around, hoping things can happen. Nothing happens until something happens. And I'm glad that you are here today and we are going to talk to God through prayers after we have taken some time to hear his word. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the fourth step to operating in the realm of the spiritual. So that when we go to God in prayers with our elevated prayers, God can and God will do it for us. Let us pray, we we'll have some music and we'll be right back to talk about operating in the spirit realm. Gracious God, our Father in heaven, we ask blessings now upon your word and upon this our time together in Jesus' precious name, amen, and thanks be to God. Today, we want to continue talking about believing. Believing in God is a fundamental step to this whole business of entering the mystery of God. The scripture says that when you come to God, the very first thing that must be done you must believe. It didn't say ask questions or not ask questions. Believe. Believe what? Believe that God is and that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. Sometimes I hear people say, well, I don't believe in God. And I said, why not? I said, well, because I cannot see him. And I would ask them, I said, did you look in the mirror this morning? And they say, yes. I said, uh, uh, I will ask, did you see your brains in your head? No, I didn't see it. What do you mean? I said, do you believe you have brains in your head? Yes, I do. Can you see it? No, I cannot. But how can you believe you have brains in your head if you haven't seen it, you believe, but you cannot believe the God who even made and created the brains. So the scripture says in Hebrews 11 and 6, when you come to God, you've got to, first of all, believe. If you don't believe, you throw off the whole process. But the aspect of believing is a spiritual thing. It is not material. It's not organizational. It's not uh, tribal. It's not cultural. It is spiritual. You know, Jesus said when you Go to worship, you must worship the Lord, how? In spirit and in truth. So the business of believing God is a spiritual phenomenon, just like faith. 
Faith is a spiritual phenomenon. It's something you cannot see, but it is as real as anything else. When you think about the tornadoes and the storms, we cannot see them, but we only see the impact and the reaction based upon when it come against a tree, come against a house, come against a car. We see what happens. The same it is with the spirit of God. The spirit of God is real. And so if we are going to be change agents, if we're going to be a part of those who make a difference in the world, like Jesus said, you are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. And if you are going to be one of those people who's not sitting on the fence of neutrality, you don't know which way you want to go. You're neither hot nor cold. If you're going to be among those who will, in fact, make a difference in the world, it means you're going to become a partner with God. And if you're going to become a partner with God, you've got to believe. And the business of believing is a spiritual thing. And we said there are several steps to this business of the spiritual realm, operating in the spirit realm. You see, as human beings, we are spirit. I don't want to use the word trapped, but we are a spirit in this physical body. If you ever been to the cemetery before to bury your dead ones, what you're burying is not the mother, the father, the uncle, the brother, the sister, the aunt, the cousin, the neighbor, the co-worker that you knew. What is being buried is in fact, sorry to tell you, the dirt from which we were created. But the spirit, the essence goes back to be with God. And so it's, it's very important why we have made a very serious mistake in overemphasizing, overcompensating, overorganizing for this physical body. The truth is this body ends up in the cemetery, but the spirit goes to be with God. Hebrews said that we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. Who are these witnesses? These are our grandparents, our parents, our brothers, our sisters, our loved ones, our pastors, our bishops, our elders, those who walk with God. They are in the heavenly realm. And so really, the truth be told, if we want to really bombard heaven, and begin to experience the marvel, the mystery, the miraculous of heaven, then we have to tap into the spiritual realm. Jesus said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. What Jesus was saying essentially, if you are concerned, if you are interested in the spiritual aspect of your being, the kingdom of God is yours. Why? Because when it comes to the spiritual things, we are limited. And that's why we have to ask God for the Holy Spirit. Ask God for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Ask God to walk in the spirit realm. I don't want you to be just another believer who's just walking around and not tapping into all of your benefits. I'm not sure if you heard this story before. I must have told you, I can tell it again. But this lady was uh, an entrepreneur. She was a businesswoman. And uh, there was this uh, business meeting that we were having on a ship. All of the people with big, big business acumen, big, big businesses, were on that ship. And so she wanted to be a part of it. And she went, she 
work hard and purchase a ticket. And she went on board and every day she will go to the, the sessions. And then after the session, when they break for break, she would get missing. And what she was doing, she brought with her some, some crackers, some siding, some spam, and all kinds of little things. She had her own little box with food and she would go to her room and she would begin to eat. And then after the session, she would come back and, you know, participate like everybody else. There was a gentleman who was watching her carefully. One day he, he approached her, he said, lady, I noticed that uh, you don't hang around to socialize and to be a part of what is happening. Whenever the sessions are closed, you will leave, you'll go, and then you come back. Don't you like to fellowship and dine and all of that? She said, well, I would love to, but the reality is that I, I purchased ticket just to come to the sessions. The man said, lady, where, 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 where is your ticket? And she went in her pocketbook and took it out. And at the bottom of the, the, the ticket, it had lodging, voyage, and including all other benefits. And then they had in parentheses, banquets, dinners, theaters, plays. And here this woman had been on this ship all of these days, almost coming to the end, and failed to read the fine prints. The fine prints really illustrated her benefits, what she was entitled to. Well, thank God she had somebody to tell her and she was able to get it corrected. Where the same it is with us. If you read the fine prints, if you read the fine prints in the Bible, God intended for us to be fruitful, to multiply, to have a, a ability to subdue, a ability to have dominion. He, he blessed us with everything in heavenly places. He even made us to sit in heavenly places through Jesus Christ. We are his masterpiece. The challenge though is we're not reading the fine prints. And in order to understand the fine prints, we have to operate in the realm of the spirit. And operating in the realm of the spirit is so crucial. If you do not remember anything that we have said or will ever say, remember this, Jesus Christ came to this earth to destroy the works of the devil, to reconcile us back to God, to redeem us from sin, from death and the grave, and to make it possible that the Holy Spirit is made available to us. And that's the reason why he said to his disciples in John the 14th chapter, he said, I'm, I'm gonna talk to the father and he will send you another advocate. I want you to know, if you want to elevate your prayer life, then you want to get excited about the operations of the Holy Spirit. As I was preparing for this session today, God dropped in my spirit that the secret, the secret to victorious living, the secret to walking in his word, the secret to experiencing all of the blessings God has for you and God has for me. 
the secret is operating in the spirit realm and walking according to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. If you walk according to the guidance of the Holy Spirit, if you operate in the realm of the Spirit, I'm telling you, you are ready to experience the joy of what it means to be a Christian, to be a follower of Jesus Christ. God said it. He said it's not by might. It's not by power. It's not by some organizational scheme. It's not by some liturgical process. God said the way by which you can encounter him and have fellowship with him and walk in victory is through the power of the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. And so we want to share with you today the fourth element of operating in the spirit so that we move on to the elevated prayers. What, what, what's involved in elevating your prayer life? We said that you got to agree. You, you got to believe. But then we'll also talk about how to commit your ways, your works, your plans onto the Lord. But I want to finish today talking about the spiritual aspect because this business is, is a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual thing. There's a gentleman by the name of D.L. Moody. You probably have heard the name before. D.L. Moody was a regular lay person. But he became very, very famous. And oftentimes when they had meetings, uh, his name will always pop up. There was never ever a spiritual religious meeting in his age that his name didn't come up. And one day somebody asked the question, what is it about D.L. Moody that everybody's talking about him? Does he have a monopoly on the Holy Spirit? And they said, no, no, he doesn't have a monopoly on the Holy Spirit but the Holy Spirit has a monopoly on him. And when the Holy Spirit has a monopoly on you, ah, glory to God, that's when you really, really know, not know, but you really believe. And you walk in that confidence, you walk in that courage, you walk in that commitment, indeed, that nothing is too hard for God. With God, all things are possible. You see, a lot of time we say it, but we really don't believe it. Because if we believed it, then our actions, the kind of dreams and visions that we'll have will explain what we say we're saying. So today, I want us to just take some time now and, and delve into the fourth dimension of the spiritual operation by which we can elevate our belief system so that when we go to God in prayers, God can actually do it for us. Because he, you know, you remember we talk about the fact that God is a prayer answering God. He's actually a prayer answering God. And because he's a prayer answering God, we have no doubt. What does the Bible say? The Bible says here in Romans, the eighth chapter and the fourth verse, 14 verse rather. And this is actually, listen to me. This is the actual secret to living an abundant, blessed, compassionate, and a dedicated life to God. If you are truly, truly interested in living abundantly, like Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and you might have it more abundantly. If you are interested in living the blessed life, and you see, the blessed life is two parts. Part one is the favor of God, and part two is the protection of God on your dreams, on your hopes, on your aspirations. Because you see, one of the things you want to understand is that Whenever you are blessed, 
the enemy always wants to come and destroy. He may come through your friends. He may come through the institution. He may come through the world, but he comes to destroy. But when the blessing of God is upon your life, not only are you favored, but you are also protected. And so in the book of Romans, the eighth chapter in the 14th verse, listen to this now. For as many as are led by the spirit, they are the sons and the daughters of God. Did you hear that? For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons and the daughters of God. You see, what this means, it means that the spirit of God is interacting with your spirit, guiding you, ordering your steps so that the purpose for which God created you, the assignment for which God sent you into this world, the mission that you are on, that you never ever miss it. Because why? The Holy Spirit will guide you. The Holy Spirit will lead you. The Holy Spirit will order your steps. You know, we do a lot, but it's not how much you do, but it's what you are that makes the difference. And what you are is made possible through the power of the Holy Spirit. So the Apostle Paul here says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons and the daughters of Almighty God. How can you tell that the spirit of God is in you and dwelling with you. How can you tell it? You can tell that the spirit of God is dwelling in you because the spirit bears fruit. The spirit is like a seed. The spirit is the DNA of God. And when the spirit of God is in you, it bears fruit. In the book of Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23, it tells us something about what it really, really means to be a fully developed follower of Jesus Christ. What does it mean to be a fully devoted follower of Jesus Christ? To be a fully devoted follower of Jesus Christ means that the Holy Spirit has had his way in your life and the Holy Spirit has, 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 has borne fruit in you and you are no longer operating in the flesh. You are no longer operating in your sensuality, but you are operating in the spirit. What are the fruit of the spirit? Love. Joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, faith, meekness, temperance. When you look at this list, everything we want, everything we desire can be found in this list. I mean... Who doesn't want to love and to be loved? Who doesn't want joy? Who doesn't want peace? The whole world needs peace. We need peace in the home, peace in the community, peace in our world. That's one of the reasons why we have this global prayer focus that we might pray for peace, that we might pray for unity, that we might pray hallelujah, that God Almighty will usher in peace, will usher in love, will usher in harmony. Yes, 
That's the reason why we have this global prayer focus so that there will be peace. Yes, there's suffering in the world, but if you know how to go through your suffering moments, if you know how to condition yourself to understand the challenges of suffering, I shared with you once upon a time about a gentleman by the name of Victor Frankl. Victor Frankl was one of those who was captured in the German concentration camps. It is said that he went from one to two to three different concentration camps. His wife died, his father died, his mother died, his sister died. Everybody around him died, but he kept alive. And someone asked him, why were you able to go from one concentration camp to another and not die? He said, I had hope. And what is hope? Hope is the expectation. Hope is knowing that something good is going to happen for you. That's hope. When you say you have hope, you are saying essentially, I have a feeling everything is going to be all right. I know I don't know how to design it, describe it, illustrate it, but something in my soul tells me that everything is going to be all right. Yes, I may be going through right now. As Job said, though he slays me, yet will I trust him. So how can you tell that the Holy Spirit is dwelling in you? You know it because of the love that you have for God, the love that you have for others, and the love you have for yourself. The joy you have just by knowing that God is your heavenly father. For those who do not have father, earthly fathers, God said when you don't have a father or mother, he will be your father, he will be your mother. And I can assure you, he's a very good one. I tried him and he's all right. He's fantastic. So when the Holy Spirit is dwelling in you, you have love, you have joy, you have peace, you have long suffering, you have gentleness, you have goodness going for you, you have faith in the things of God, you have meekness, hallelujah, and you are temperate. You're not easily angered. You know, some people, they say they love the Lord, but don't, don't, don't rub them wrongly. Don't, don't do that. Something bad will come out. And you know, you know how long it takes to build a cathedral? It takes many, many years. But do you know it takes just a few seconds with the right dynamite and you can take down a whole cathedral, just like a city. You know, we're watching what's happening in Ukraine, in parts of Africa, parts of Europe, it took many years to build those cities, many years to build those cultures. And just one bomb can decimate and destroy. What am I saying to you? You can spend all of the years working to have a good reputation. And if you're not careful, all it takes, one crazy decision and everything comes tumbling down. And the only thing people remember of you, when your name is mentioned, oh, that's the person who shoplifted. Oh, that's the person who murdered somebody. Oh, that's the person who did this, did that. They don't remember all of the 99 wonderful things you did in life. That's why you have to be careful and let the Holy Spirit guide you. That's what God wants. God wants us to be successful. God wants us to abound. But my brothers and my sisters, let me tell you the truth. The key is, in fact, through the power 
of the Holy Spirit. To the power of the Holy Spirit. Let me just share with you what happens when the Holy Spirit is in and dwelling with you. You see, because one of the principal things that the Holy Spirit is supposed to do for us is to help us to clarify, to understand our mission, our assignment, our purpose, and our goals for living. Because guess what? Please understand, you may have a job, praise God, it helps you to pay your rent, et cetera, et cetera. But be careful not to confuse God's assignment on your life with a job. Do not confuse God's plan for your life with a job. The job may be the means, the conduit, the process by which God will get you to what it is that you're supposed to be and supposed to do. So if you look with me at Matthew chapter four, you will see how when the Holy Spirit is working with you, how the Holy Spirit can help you to clarify your vision, your mission, your goal for existence. In Matthew chapter four, it happened for Jesus. And if it happened for Jesus, yes, it can happen for you and it can happen for me. It says here in Matthew chapter four, beginning at verse one, then Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted. That word tempt is not to do something negative, but to be tested to, uh, to, to make sure that he brings forth the plan of salvation as God intended to be tested. And who was the one? <laughs> the devil. It says, for 40 days and 40 nights, he fasted and became very, very hungry. I want you to listen to this. The devil doesn't bother you when you're doing well. When you're doing well on your own, no, he doesn't bother you. When you go into your nightclub, you're drinking, you're womanizing, you're doing everything, he doesn't bother you. No, uh-uh. But when you decide, <laughs> when you decide you're going to follow God, you're going to take your walk with God seriously, that's when he gets excitedly disturbed and wants to get the best of you. So he waited until Jesus was hungry. And then he stepped up. During that time, the devil came and said to him, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. One of the things the enemy always does, two things. One, to attack your relationship with God. And two, to make you think that your existence is based upon material things. Try to twist the word of God to make you think that what really matters is how much money you have in the bank, how much of house you have, what kind of car you drive, what sort of clothes you wear, where in the neighborhood you live, how, what kind of reputation you have. And all of those things, don't get me wrong, they're all wonderful. But they do not cross the bridge from earth to glory. And so he came, he tested Jesus, says, if you're the son of God, turn these stones to become bread. But Jesus told him, no, 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 no. The scripture says, people do not live by bread alone. Yes, your job is wonderful, but let me tell you, hmm, you try getting sick and the doctor tell you you have cancer. 
and you tell me what job can come and kill and heal that cancer. I told you about Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs, when he died, had was worth over 10 point plus billions of dollars. But the money could not kill the cancer, pancreatic cancer he had. What am I saying to you? The word of God can make the difference in your life. So Jesus says, no, 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 no. Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. You think the devil will have learned his lesson? It says, then the devil took him to the holy city, Jerusalem, to the highest point of the temple and said to him, if you are the son of God, jump off. For the scripture says he will order his angels to protect you and they will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. Jesus said, the scripture says also, you must not tempt the Lord your God. I want you to understand that the enemy will always attack your relationship with God, your identity with God, and what the word of God says or didn't say. But if you notice here, every time when Jesus was tempted, he went to what? The word of God. He didn't try to rationalize. He didn't go to a psychologist. He didn't go to a counselor. He went to the word of God. And with the word of God and the Holy Spirit, with some understanding, you can make it. If you think that the devil would have left him, no. Then the devil comes back and the devil took him spiritually. Now, this is all spiritual things happening. The devil take him to the peak of the very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And the devil said, what? I will give it all to you, he said, if you will kneel down and worship me. Because the truth is, if we are not careful, we will worship material things. Worship our cars, worship our clothes, worship our homes, worship our low piece of job, worship our credit card, worship our cell phone, worship material things. The devil told Jesus, if you can kneel down and worship me, I will give you all of these things. How crazy was the devil? Don't you know Jesus Christ? Through him, everything was created. And you would tell him to bow down to himself. But listen to what Jesus said to him. Jesus said, get out of here, Satan. For the scripture says, you must worship the Lord, your God, and serve him only. Worship God and serve him only. Worship God and serve him only. I want you to know this. If your job is not a service to God, you need to revisit it. If whatever you do is not a way by which you serve God, then you are living a double life. The scripture says, whatever you do, whether you drink, whether you eat, whether you, whatever you do, do it to the glory of God. And so Jesus here says, you must worship God and serve him only. So that means everything you do must be of either worship or service to God. You see, because if whatever you do is not a worship or service to God, then you are, you, you're the kind of person who one minute you're worshiping God, serving God. The other minute you're worshiping yourself, you're worshiping the world. And so everything you do, you must see it as a way by which you are worshiping God. Jesus was led of the spirit 
And because he was led of the spirit, he was able to execute the plan of salvation, even to the point of going to the cross of Calvary and dying for us. But because he was led by the spirit of God and did what God said that he must do, guess what? He died on Friday, but Sunday morning, God be praised. He was raised from the dead and now he's been given all power. He said, all power is given unto me, both in heaven and in earth. And because of what he's done, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, when you are led by the spirit of God, it makes all the difference in the world. When you are led by the spirit of God, you saw what Jesus did? Jesus was able to overcome, overpower, to decimate the enemy because of what? Because he was very okoron. He was very knowledgeable. He knew the word of God. What does the word of God say to us? In Psalm 119, verse 133, it says what? Order my steps in your word. You want to be victorious? You want to overcome? You want to succeed? You want to accomplish? Let the word of God order your steps. In Isaiah chapter 43, verse 26, God said, put me in remembrance of my word. Um, what did God say to you? What did God say about you? I often tell you how in the pastorate, we came upon Psalm number 84, verse 11. That said, for the Lord God, there's a sun and a shield. He will give grace and glory and no good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Ah, and I stood on that scripture and said to the congregation, I am believing God for $50 million. I know some of them look at me kind of crazy, but can I tell you that God exceeded that? Whenever you have the opportunity to come to Gola and Winston-Salem, North Carolina, U.S. of A, come to a street called Patterson. We were the only viable entity in that very area, vicinity. God blessed us. We purchased some almost 15 acres of land in the city. And God did it. All because of that particular word for the Lord God is a sun and a shield he will give grace and glory and no good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly so whenever I went to God and prayed you, do you know what I did I put God in remembrance of that word I said God you said if I walk upright, then no good thing will you withhold from me. I put God in remembrance of his word. And God did it. He exceeded my expectations. Yes, God did it. And I want to encourage you. Take some time and find out, God, what are you speaking to me? What is the word? What is the message for me? God told Joshua in Joshua 1 and verse 8, he says, listen, this word, if you keep this word in your mouth, and if you do not turn to the right or to the left, you know what God said? You will bring to yourself good success. You see, there's some success that can cause you headache. If I had the time, I would share with you how once upon a time, we're doing a program and it was very successful, but it was one of the most stressful times in my life. Why? Because I was surrounded by people 
who were not standing on the word of God. When they saw what had happened, they got carried away. And it made life very difficult for me. So that's why I know there is such a thing as good success and success that can be stressful. But when God does it, there's no burden along with it. And so God said to Joshua, if you keep this word in your mouth, it will bring to you good success. God said through Moses to the children of Israel in Deuteronomy chapter 28, beginning at verse one, he said, listen, if you pay attention to what I'm telling you, and if you do them, hallelujah, I'm going to cause the blessings to overtake you. Can you imagine running after your blessings? Can you imagine chasing after your blessings? Because God not only blessed you, but he exceeded your expectation. He exceeded your imagination. He exceeded any kind of thought you had. All because of what? The word of God. But as I said in the beginning, this is the secret. Is the word of God, yes, but it is the leadership of the Holy Spirit in your life that makes the difference. So I want to encourage you. If you are not assured of the Holy Spirit in your life, ask the Lord, God, give me your Holy Spirit. You know, on the day of Pentecost, Peter gave the formula, repent of your sin, be baptized, and ask the Lord. He will give you the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And when you have the Holy Spirit, not only will you be blessed in the word of God, but you'll be blessed in the city, blessed in the country, blessed in the home. Whatever you do, God said you will be blessed. Why? Because you are being led appropriately by the word of God. It's just like going to your ATM machine. When you put your card in, you got to remember the pin number. The same it is with us and God. When you plug your life into the things of the kingdom of God and you know what God said to you and you put God in remembrance of what he said to you is your pin number. And when you put in the right pin number, you get out your own money. The blessing is there for you, but you've got to appropriate it through the power of the word of God as you are led by the Holy Spirit. Ask God to bless you with the Holy Spirit, receive the Holy Spirit, and continue in the Holy Spirit. And guess what? You will be elevated in your prayers. You will go from your body to your soul, all the way to your spirit man. I want to encourage you to live in the third dimension of your spirituality. And what is the third dimension? It is the realm of the spirit, not the soul, not the body, but the spirit. Because what God does, God speaks to your spirit man and your spirit man speaks to your soul and your soul tells the body what to do. And if you do that, I guarantee you, you can say, like David said, I've been young, but now I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Our God is an awesome God, but we must worship him in spirit and in truth. We must serve him, whatever we do, in spirit and in truth. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the blessed Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you for watching, and make plans to join our live audience on Zoom, each weekday, at 12 o'clock noon Eastern Standard Time. Log on with Zoom ID 898-0388-5432, and enter password 821074. Visit us online at www.sathlardy.org, and please remember to subscribe to this channel.